U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo's speech on July 23rd about the threat of the Chinese Communist Party and the future of the free world was considered as a declaration of war by many, kicking off a new Cold War between the United States and China. On July 24th, the CCP ordered the closure of the U.S. consulate in Chengdu in retaliation for the U.S. shutting down the Chinese consulate in Houston three days prior. U.S. Consulate General in Chengdu suddenly became a hot topic again. The last time this office was in the headlines was when the chief of Chongqing Public Security Bureau deflected there eight years ago. A city-state public security chief set off a major U.S.-China diplomatic event at the same time. On February 6, 2012, Wang Lijun, then chief of the Chongqing Public Security Bureau, broke into the U.S. consulate in Chengdu to seek political asylum and exposed the murder of Gu Kailai, the wife of Bo Xilai, then secretary of the Chongqing Municipal Party Committee. As an international counter-terrorist cooperator, Wang Lijun exchanged views with American diplomats on environmental protection, education, technology, and so on. In the end, he said he was worried about his life and requested that the United States provide him with accommodation and apply for political asylum. After the CCP learned that Wang Lijun had entered the U.S. consulate, Chongqing mobilized armed police to surround the U.S. consulate, and Bo Xilai desperately wanted to arrest Wang Lijun. Gary Locke, the then U.S. ambassador to China, reported the situation to the then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. And soon after, the Washington officials made the decision to reject Wang Lijun's asylum application. It was said that Wang Lijun stayed in the U.S. consulate for 30 hours. Senior Obama administration officials and the then Vice President Joe Biden feared that protecting Wang Lijun would disrupt the upcoming February 14th meeting between Biden and the then Vice President of the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, in Washington. As the asylum started looking hopeless, Wang Lijun called Kong Tao, Zhou Yunkang's godson, who was the Chinese security czar. Soon after, Kong Tao, accompanied by the vice minister of security Qiu Jin, went to Chengdu to pick up Wang Lijun. When Wang Lijun walked out of the consulate, Chongqing deputy mayor Huang Qifan and others wanted to take Wang back. The two sides quarreled fiercely. But in the end, the national security personnel took Wang Lijun back to Beijing. Eight days later, on February 14th, Xi Jinping visited the United States. Xi and Biden talked about the materials turned over by Wang Lijun. Xi started treating Biden as his old friend ever since. It is reported that the materials Wang Lijun transferred to the U.S. consulate contained plans for Bo Xilai and Zhou Yunkang to jointly launch a coup and dethrone Xi Jinping after the 18th National Congress in November 2012. Biden showed Xi hard evidence of Bo and Zhou's coup conspiracy. The documents Wang Lijun gave to the U.S. consulate also contained evidence of Zhou Yunkang and Bo Xilai's crimes of harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners. A series of events unfolded. On February 6, 2012, Wang Lijun broke into the U.S. consulate in Chengdu. On March 15th, Bo Xilai was removed from his post. On March 20th, Baidu, the Chinese search engine, lifted the ban on keywords such as live organ harvesting and Wang Lijun live harvesting. On March 23rd, Wang Jiefu, the vice minister of health of the CCP, announced that the CCP intends to stop organ harvesting from executed prisoners within three to five years. Wang Lijun himself was involved in the crime of live organ harvesting. On August 12, 2014, Ethan Gutman, a senior Chinese analyst in the United States, disclosed a photo of Wang Lijun during the launch of his new book, The Slaughter, at the National Democracy Foundation, a think tank in Washington, D.C. He revealed the close connection between the political situation of the CCP and its crimes of killing prisoners of conscience on demand for their organs. 
Gutman estimated that between 2000 and 2008, about 66,000 Falun Gong practitioners in mainland China were forced to have their organs harvested. The CCP's crime of harvesting organs from live Falun Gong practitioners has been covered up for more than 20 years.